Hey guys, you're watching Danski, the place to be to develop your creative skills. Once again, we're jumping into Photoshop and in this tutorial, we're going to learn how you can take a mobile design and mock that up onto a device, something like an iPhone, and we're going to be doing this all from scratch. So if you've never created product mockups before, we'll be covering these steps involved in this tutorial. And if you do mockups on a regular basis, there is one extra effect that I like to apply to my mockups. It just helps them feel a bit more authentic. And if you'd like to follow along with this tutorial, there's a link in the description to download the assets that I'm using. But anyway, let's jump into it. Rightio, so we're now in Photoshop and you can see I've opened up an image of a smartphone. This is an iPhone 5S. It's a photo I shot a few years ago. It's not the best photo, but the reason I chose it is because we have a much more in focus bottom part of the phone and then it graduates to a nice shallow depth of field at the top of the phone. So creating a product mock-up on something like this is a little bit more complex and that's what we're going to be covering in this video. So I've also opened up a screen design. Now the problem I've got is this is for the iPhone 10 or the iPhone X, but it doesn't matter. I'm just going to crop into the bottom. Although ideally, if you have an iPhone 5S product photo like this, you also have an iPhone 5S screen to mock it up on. But it doesn't matter. Like I say, there's lots of blur, so we're just going to use this instead. In fact, if you'd like to download this exact screen and the full UI kit that I created in XD a little while ago, there is a link to that in the description. So what we're going to do is just jump back to our main tutorial document. Don't worry, we'll come back to the UI screen in a minute. Now we're going to grab the rectangle tool. And if we just go and pick a really bright, punchy color for now, doesn't matter what. Now the resolution of the device you're mocking up onto, so in this case, the iPhone 5S is what we're going to need to create this. If you're not sure, just Google your device and then it should be able to give you the resolution. So I'm going to left click anywhere on the canvas and type 375 by 667, which I believe is the resolution for the iPhone 5S. I may have got that wrong, but it doesn't matter. I'm sure you'll let me know down in the comments anyway. And you can edit that from the properties panel if you need to. And if you want to, you can apply a slight corner radius just to round off those corners. But once you've created this, the next thing you're going to do is go to edit down to free transform and scale this up holding shift. Now, the reason we hold shift is so everything stays nice and proportional. If you don't hold shift, it will do that. And that's not what we want. So we'll hold shift and just make this nice and big. And then you can press return or double click to set that transformation. And I'm going to double click on the text here and change rectangle one to screen. Now what we're going to do next is right click on this screen layer and then select convert to smart object. And effectively this will take a snapshot of this object as it currently is. And we can double click on the thumbnail and go inside that smart object and you'll see it loads up a separate screen.psb file here. So we can make some changes to this object, save and close it, and it will take us back to our main document. So what we're going to do is we're now going to jump to our screen design and go select all. You'll see the marching ants appear, indicating the entire canvas is selected and just go to edit, copy, switch over to that screen.psb document and go to edit and paste. And we can then close down our screen and you'll see it's quite small. So we can just scale that up by going to edit free transform. Now we can scale by holding shift and it will scale up. But if we hold down alt on the keyboard as well, it will scale from the center, which sometimes is quite handy. And of course, as I mentioned, this is an iPhone 10 design mocking up onto the dimensions of an iPhone 5s, but that's fine. That's fine. Got a nice crop here. And this top bit's going to be blurred anyway. So we'll press return or double click to set that transformation. And as I mentioned, we're just going to close this down and it will ask us, do we want to save? So we'll save those changes and you can see that they're updated in the main document. So just to recap, double click the thumbnail, make your changes, save and close. Boom. We're back to the main document. So now what we can do is we've got this smart object. We can go to edit free transform and we can hover over the corners and you'll see you get the scale icon appear. Now, if we press command or control on the keyboard, depending on whether you're on a Mac or a PC, you'll see it changes to this little white cursor and we can click and drag and distort the shape. So you guessed it. We're now going to fit this to the product itself. So we'll do something like this. Just make sure it does cover the entirety of the screen and we're nice and even on all the edges. And it's a good idea actually to 
Just to zoom in as well, this gets quite blurry here, so it's quite tricky to see, but I think this looks fine. And then again, just press return or double click to set that transformation. And there we go, we're done. No, just kidding, we're not quite done, but you can see we have this blur that gets quite crazy out here and the, uh, the screen design is still really sharp, so that's gonna be an issue. So what we're going to do is we have our smart object selected, our screen layer. Go up to filter and you will need one of the more recent versions of Photoshop to have this effect, but we have the blur gallery. So just go along and go to tilt shift. And you'll see this dialog box appears here. And we've got this circle with all these lines and it all looks a little bit crazy. What this allows us to do with tilt shift is graduate a blur from one direction to another. Now, sometimes this will take a little bit longer if you're running on an old computer or if you have a really high res image. So if you do struggle with this bit and you know what you're doing, just deselect preview, make all your changes over here and on the main space in the middle, check preview and it will show your changes. So I'm going to try and do this in real time. Hopefully my computer doesn't melt. So from the tilt shift panel on the right, I like to bump up the blur to start with. So it's really over the top, loads and loads of blur, just so I can rotate everything and get everything in the right position. So what I'm going to do now, as you can see, as I hover over these lines, I can actually move these around and it adjusts where the blur starts and where it finishes. Now I can also click anywhere to drop a pin and create another blur. So if I just select this one that was here by default, I can press delete or backspace on the keyboard and it will delete that and then I can select this one here. So what I'm going to do now is if I hover over, you see these points here, we get the, the different symbols appear. So we've got the move symbol here, we've got the rotate symbol here, and I can just rotate this around because of course our product markup is on an angle. So let's try and match that as best we can and adjust these lines. Let's see how this looks. So you can see as I change that there, the graduation of the blur does adjust. Even if it's very choppy on my 2013 laptop, which is hanging in there. Come on laptop, you can do this. So once I've got this all set up and you can tinker with this until your heart's content, I then adjust the blur just so it matches the smartphone around it. So you can see here it's very, very blurred and you can zoom in a bit closer if you want to. So the blur of the screen needs to match the blur of the device you're mocking up onto, if it has blur. And the same for this midpoint and the same here as well. So we're trying to blend the screen design with the product mockup as authentically and believably as we can. So let's just try and drop this down a little bit more. Something like that perhaps. And you can go and add more blur down here and you can adjust all of these lines and you can tinker with this as much as you like. And if you'd like a high quality finish, you can also check the high quality box there. And when you've got something you're happy with, just click OK. And then it will take you back to the main document and you can see this is now listed as a smart filter down here so we can turn this effect on and off to see the difference. We can double click on blur gallery to go back and make some changes. We can drag it to the trash at the bottom of the layers panel or we can just collapse this down to hide that there. So that's the great thing about having a smart object is you can apply tons and tons of smart filters. Now you can see here we've got the bottom edge on the screen design that's very sharp. In fact, it almost looks a little bit too sharp. So what you could do is you could have done that all within the blur gallery, but something else that I find is a, an easy way to do this is just go up to filter down to blur and select Gaussian blur. Now we didn't use Gaussian blur at the very beginning because it does add a consistent amount of blur to the entire layer. And of course, on ours, we have a graduation from slightly less blur to tons of blur. So we need that graduation. But what we can do is we can just soften these edges around here. So if I just zoom back in so you can see, and I'll just check the preview box on and off. So really, really sharp, a little bit less sharp. So we'll drop that down to maybe three. So it's really subtle. Now, three pixels of blur on this corner here is quite noticeable three pixels of blur up here is really not noticeable. So there's no issue really of having a little bit of Gaussian blur just stacked on top of a blur gallery. So there we go, looking pretty good. I'm just gonna make a few more tweaks now. So from the bottom of the layers panel, you've got the adjustment icon. And from this menu, 
what I'm going to do is just add a photo filter layer and from the color picker, just pick a nice bright vibrant blue, something that reflects the screen design around it, just so the background, the surface is on, I believe it's a table, just matches the phone a little bit more. And we can adjust that density if you'd like that color more or less pronounced. So we can turn it on and off, lovely jubbly. And from the adjustments icon again, we can go down here and go to brightness and contrast. And we could also bump up the brightness, bump up the contrast. And if we just turn these two adjustment layers off, you can see the difference that that makes. And there we go, I think it's fair to say we've created a pretty authentic phone mock-up. Now you can't really see much of the design on screen. This is a very extreme example with a lot of blur at one end of the phone, but then you can take this technique and apply this to your own designs, mocking them up onto your own product shots. And there we go, that's how I create my product mockups. If you've got any questions or comments, or you'd like to share some tips about how you create your product mockups, please feel free to drop those down below in the comments. But as always, like this video if you enjoyed it, take care and I'll see you next time.